This is Mission Control Houston on board Columbia. Uh, the crew uh, maneuvering the shuttle toward an orientation uh, for a firing of its engines to begin its descent from orbit toward Florida. About uh, 18 minutes away from when that firing would take place to begin its descent toward the Kennedy Space Center for the first of two opportunities available for a landing in Florida by the shuttle today. Here in Mission Control, flight controllers are getting final updates on the weather and an uh, update on observations of approaches uh, to the runway uh, from Chief Astronaut Kent Rominger, who's been flying the shuttle training aircraft uh, at the Kennedy Space Center, flying practice approaches uh, to the shuttle runway. Of concern uh, during the morning has been fog uh, that uh, has been shown to dissipate uh, around Kennedy. Uh, whether or not that is dissipating quickly enough uh, is the question that flight controllers are getting updates on. Also, uh, continuing to evaluate uh, which runway would be chosen uh, for Columbia's descent, uh, runway 33 end of the shuttle landing facility or runway 15. This is a live view of the shuttle runway as seen uh, from a camera atop the vehicle assembly building at the Kennedy Space Center. The Space Shuttle Columbia at present 171 miles above the southern tip of Africa, 16 minutes away from an engine firing that would begin its trip home after 16 days of around-the-clock science in orbit.
This is Mission Control Houston, 174 miles above the Indian Ocean, just off the east coast of Africa. Columbia is in the proper orientation for a firing by its twin orbital maneuvering system engines that would begin its descent from orbit, a return to Florida this morning. That would be a two minute, 38 second long firing of its orbital maneuvering system engines to begin that descent. On board, uh, the crew has completed uh, preparations uh, for landing, all of that to going like clockwork uh, throughout the morning, uh, closing up their science work uh, in the wee hours this morning, shutting the hatch to the space hab module that uh, was the center of most of the 80 scientific investigations conducted on board uh, at about 1 a.m. today, and uh, then uh, moving through all of their landing preparations uh, very smoothly. Flight controllers are currently monitoring the weather at uh, the Kennedy Space Center landing site, uh, specifically uh, fog that uh, has limited visibility but is uh, dissipating. Using uh, reports from the shuttle training aircraft that has been uh, flown on practice approaches to the runway by Chief Astronaut Kent Romanger, uh, satellite imagery, ground observations from weather observers, and uh, forecasts uh, from the Spaceflight Meteorology Group here in Houston at uh, Mission Control. All of that data being evaluated a final time, uh, standing by uh, for a decision on whether Columbia will proceed or not with this engine firing about uh, 11 minutes away at 7.15 a.m. Central Time to lead to a touchdown in Florida at 8.16 a.m. Central. Again, a 2 minute 38 second long firing that would occur as Columbia is over the Indian Ocean, uh, just moving into evening to the west of Australia. It uh, would first encounter the effects of Earth's atmosphere uh, north of the Hawaiian Islands above the Pacific at an altitude of 75 statute miles and begin its descent into the atmosphere at that point, crossing uh, the continental United States above the coast of California, above the San Francisco Bay Area, and just to the south of Sacramento, providing persons in that area a uh, potentially spectacular view of the shuttle's descent through the atmosphere with superheated air, creating a plasma trail uh, from horizon to horizon for the shuttle. It would be visible in the Sacramento-San Francisco area first at about 5.51 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for about four minutes uh, crossing that area. Teeter's handover, and we'll get back to you on the other side. We copy, Houston. We haven't forgotten about you. Columbia would Appreciate continue across the uh, southwestern United States, uh, allowing a potential viewing from Las Vegas as well, uh, being visible there about 5.54 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for about two minutes at an elevation of about 22 degrees. In the Sacramento, Los, uh, San Francisco area, it would be at an elevation almost directly overhead of about 78 degrees. It uh, would also be visible from Flagstaff, Arizona, and uh, then from Albuquerque, New Mexico, just to the south of Albuquerque as it uh, moves towards sunrise and uh, Florida. At present, uh, Columbia is targeted toward runway 33 of the shuttle landing facility, that end of the shuttle landing facility runway, uh, to approach that runway, it would perform a right overhead 213 degree turn on its final approach to align with the runway. The runway selection continues to be evaluated based on weather conditions and the latest data here in Mission Control, that decision also pending for Columbia. So again, uh, less than 10 minutes now to an engine firing by Columbia to begin its descent, about 9 minutes away, that would occur at 7.15 a.m. for a touchdown at 8.16 a.m. Central Time at the Kennedy Space Center's runway, the first of two opportunities available for landing, weather being evaluated here in Mission Control and a decision expected uh, very shortly. This is a live television view of the shuttle runway at the, the Kennedy Space Center from a camera atop the vehicle assembly building. The sun uh, well up at Kennedy as uh, fog continues to dissipate the vicinity. Evaluating the information is uh, Entry Flight Director Leroy Kane here in Mission Control, overseeing activities uh, for the descent of Columbia. Providing communications with Columbia is uh, astronaut to Charlie Hobaugh.
Flight Director uh, Leroy Kane discussing weather conditions at present uh, with forecasters here at Mission Control. Astronaut Charlie Hoboff passing along a go to Commander Rick Husband of Columbia and his crew of seven to come home this morning to the Kennedy Space Center at the first opportunity to fire Columbia's engines in under six minutes from now, about uh, five and a half minutes to begin its descent from orbit and an approach to the Kennedy Space Center that would have it touch down at the shuttle runway at 8.16 a.m. Central Time. Flight controllers continue to evaluate which end of the runway Columbia will approach based on the uh, weather conditions. Uh, runway 15 or runway 33 as the ends are labeled. Both ends are acceptable at this point. It's just a matter of which one is the very best. Again, this engine firing will be a two minute, 38 second long firing of Columbia's twin orbital maneuvering system engines to begin its descent. We're ready for a single APU t start, attempt two. That uh, call from Columbia indicating that they're starting one of the three auxiliary power units on board the shuttle. Those are generators that supply power for the shuttle's hydraulic systems, which in turn are used to operate the elevons and rudder and speed brake, the aerosurfaces of the shuttle. One of the three generators is started prior to this engine firing. The other two will be started after the engine firing is completed and uh, while Columbia is on its descent toward the atmosphere. Houston, we're about 30 seconds to a teeter's handover. We may have some ratty calm on the next satellite. Okay, Houston, we copy.
about two and a half minutes away from an engine firing to begin Columbia's journey home to Florida this morning. Columbia moving into its final orbital sunset. It'll move into sunrise again as it descends through the atmosphere en route to Florida above the southwestern United States. Columbia is 176 miles above the Indian Ocean to the west of Australia, about 30 seconds away from the start of an engine firing to begin its descent toward Florida, completing 16 days of scientific work in orbit. This will be a 2 minute 38 second long firing of both orbital moving system engines for the shuttle, putting it on a course toward a touchdown at the Kennedy Space Center's shuttle runway at 8.16 a.m. Thanks. Watching over the operation of the orbital maneuvering system engines is uh, Propulsion Officer Dean Lenort reporting both firing now and it looking good. Two minutes and 38 seconds that both will fire to drop Columbia out of orbit put it on a course toward its first encounters with the atmosphere at an altitude of about 75 miles above the Pacific Ocean to the north of the Hawaiian Islands. Columbia's altitude at present 175 statute miles. A little over one and a half minutes left to go in the deorbit engine firing for Columbia, putting Columbia on course toward a touchdown in Florida at 8.16 a.m. Central Time today. About 20 seconds left in a deorbit engine firing for Columbia, beginning its descent to Earth. Columbia. 
Columbia, Houston, good burn, no trim required. We copy and concur, Houston, thanks. And we'll meet you in post burn. The guidance officer confirming that uh, Columbia is right on track uh, toward a landing at the Kennedy Space Center at 8.16 a.m. Central. Its first encounter with the atmosphere will come in about to 25 minutes as it uh, descends to an altitude of about 75 statute miles above the Pacific Ocean, north of the Hawaiian Islands. Its altitude at present, 176 statute miles. Several activities that will take place on board uh, for the crew. Uh, they'll begin to power up the two remaining auxiliary power units. Uh, those are generators, uh, one of which was started prior to the engine firing uh, that supply power to the hydraulic systems on board that operate the shuttle's elevons, uh, rudder, and speed brake its uh, aero surfaces. They'll also uh, begin uh, maneuvering the shuttle to the proper orientation for its first encounters with the atmosphere that uh, with the nose angled up about 40 degrees and wings level to control heating on the spacecraft uh, using the thermal tiles on the bottom of the spacecraft to control heating as it begins its initial descent into the upper extremes of Earth's atmosphere. As Columbia descends into the atmosphere and approaches uh, the continental United States, it'll begin a series of four steep banks that uh, it will follow through its approach all the way to the Kennedy Space Center. Those uh, perform to dissipate speed as it uh, descends and uh, air pressure builds. Also, uh, as it descends, its steering jets will control its orientation at first. Uh, they'll gradually be turned off, uh, turning control of the spacecraft uh, over to Aero surfaces, uh, as the shuttle transitions from spacecraft to aircraft, uh, its elevons and ailerons and rudder will become active. beginning a maneuver uh, to position it uh, for its first encounter with the atmosphere. We copy. The crew also began uh, dumping excess uh, reaction control system propellant from the forward reaction control system steering jets, uh, those by firing the jets uh, to dump that propellant uh, prior to, prior to uh, its encounter with the atmosphere. For Columbia's descent uh, on the flight deck at uh, the commander's seat, uh, Rick Husband, pilot uh, Willie McCool to his right. Uh, in the center seat, uh, aft center seat of the flight deck is flight engineer Kapana Chavla. Seated on the flight deck uh, for landing as well is a uh, mission specialist Laurel Clark. On the mid deck, the lower deck of Columbia for landing, payload specialist Ilan Ramon of the Israel Space Agency. Mission Specialist uh, David Brown and uh, Mike Anderson, Payload Commander. That's a call that uh, the forward reactor control system jets will be fired for about 63 seconds to dump all excess propellant uh, from them before uh, encountering the atmosphere. Columbia's uh, descent toward Florida will take it across the uh, breadth of the continental United States. It'll cross the west coast of the United States above the San Francisco Bay Area of California, providing a spectacular sighting opportunity for persons in the uh, San Francisco and Sacramento, California Bay Area. For uh, the San Francisco area, Columbia should first become visible about 5.51 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, be visible for about to four minutes from San Francisco and Sacramento, an elevation of about 78 degrees in the pre-dawn sky of California, uh, almost directly overhead of that area. It'll also be visible from Las Vegas as it continues its descent across the 
southwest United States uh, at an elevation of about 22 degrees from Las Vegas. Visible there about 5.54 to 5.56 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. A minute or so later, it'll become visible from Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, moving to the south of Albuquerque, and also uh, above Flagstaff, Arizona, just before that. It'll move into sunrise as it uh, continues east across the United States uh, toward Florida, headed toward a touchdown there at 8.16 a.m. Central Time. Propulsion officer here reports that uh, dump of propellant through the forward reactor and control system jets on Columbia is in progress, uh, that uh, going as planned. The crew also soon will start uh, the two remaining auxiliary power units on board, those uh, two generators that will join a third that uh, was started prior to the engine firing that began the shuttle's descent to generate power for the shuttle's hydraulic systems during the entry and landing. About uh, 17 minutes away from Columbia's first encounters with the atmosphere, that occurring in altitude of about 75 miles above the Pacific Ocean to the north of the Hawaiian Islands.
It's Mission Control Houston. Uh, Flight Dynamics Officer here in Mission Control, Richard Jones, uh, continuing to discuss uh, runway options and uh, approach for Columbia, uh, the best possible approach for the shuttle landing facility. Columbia currently targeted toward a landing on Kennedy Space Center runway 33, end of the shuttle landing facility runway. Uh, discussion uh, as to whether or not uh, that may be switched to runway 15, uh, that uh, decision expected uh, as Columbia continues its descent. There's no issue with making that decision uh, as Columbia is descending. Uh, that's been done uh, during previous shuttle entries as well. The flight dynamics officer oversees uh, the trajectories of the shuttle and its uh, flight as it uh, enters the atmosphere and also uh, during launch. Again, a discussion underway still of the runway that uh, will be selected uh, as the final runway for Columbia's landing. Columbia on track, though, for touchdown around 8.16 a.m. Central Time. Altitude now 146 statute miles as Columbia free falls toward its encounter with the atmosphere. That will occur at an altitude of about 75 miles in about 13 minutes as it uh, continues west, uh, encountering the atmosphere above the Pacific Ocean to the north of the Hawaiian Islands. On remaining AP start. Pilot Willie McCool calling down that he's starting the two remaining auxiliary power units on board now, so all three will be up and running. They supply power for the shuttle's hydraulic systems. Max and GNC, you ready? Fine, Max, we're ready. GNC's go. And we're ready, Willie. No deltas. Delta, no deltas. Columbia's altitude now 135 statute miles as it continues to descend toward the atmosphere above the Pacific Ocean. All activities are going smoothly on board. Columbia on track toward a touchdown at the Kennedy Space Center shuttle landing facility runway at 8.16 a.m. Central Time. Evaluations are still ongoing of runway selection, which end of the runway Columbia will approach. Currently targeted for runway 33 there, however. With uh, Columbia on track for landing, we'll now go to the Kennedy Space Center for an update there on preparations to receive Columbia after its 16-day scientific journey. 
This is Kennedy Space Center Shuttle Ground Operations. After a flawless 16 days Final in point. orbit for Columbia, all is in readiness Final for its return to the shuttle launch? landing facility. Yes, it's going to be a 10 minute delay. 255, Columbia will be crossing the Florida Panhandle, entering a portion of the Gulf of Mexico, and then crossing the coastline once again near Crystal River, moving inland to Orlando, and then proceeding eastward toward the Kennedy Space we'll Center it, uh, and Cape Canaveral. Most of the final landing preparations were completed on Friday. All of the convoy um, vehicles the and their support systems were turned on and checked out, to, uh, and there was a thorough sweep of the runway to check for possible we'll debris. That sweep was repeated again this morning. Okay. The landing team began the arriving the at 6 a.m. and had an initial tag up and landing and status at briefing at 6.45. All team members uh, required to be at their assigned stations at the runway at 7.15. There was a final briefing by the convoy right commander so to the landing the team at 7.45. The Thank 20 you. landing convoy vehicles were deployed to the ends of the runway at 8.15 this morning. Okay. The shuttle landing facility at KSC is 15,000 feet long and 300 feet wide, about a third longer and twice as wide as a runway at a major commercial international airport. It is located about three miles northwest of the Complex 39 the Vehicle Assembly Building. STS-107 marks the 62nd landing on the Space Shuttle Orbiter at the KSC runway. Following landing and return to the hangar, Columbia will be deserviced and then processed for its next mission this fall. Currently, the weather observation the, at the shuttle uh, landing facility has a temperature of 52 degrees with winds westerly at 5 knots. The expected high during the day today on the runway while due to deservicing Columbia is underway is expected to be around 69 degrees with winds from the west-northwest 12 to 18 knots. Astronaut Kent Rogemer, accompanied by... Educator astronaut Barbara Morgan began flying weather reconnaissance around the Cape Canaveral vicinity at 6.15 this morning. And over the last hour and a half, we've been flying approaches to the runway in the shuttle training aircraft. Wilmer is reporting his observations back to Houston to the weather astronaut Glenn Carey and to the NOAA National Weather Service Space Flight Meteorology Group. The Milo tracking station at KSC will acquire Columbia on about 13 minutes before landing. Now we begin supplying controllers in Houston with voice, data, and telemetry communications starting about a minute later. At 11 minutes before touchdown, the orbiter will begin receiving navigation signals from the TACAM, which is the homing beacon, and the navigation signal at the shuttle landing facility. As Columbia intercepts the heading alignment circle, the first video should become available. And Columbia will cross directly overhead of the SLF, heading out over the Atlantic Ocean, making a gradual right turn toward a seven-mile final approach to runway 33, if that is the runway that is finally determined. That would be a southeast to northwest approach. Columbia's weight as it touches down on the runway will be 234,000 pounds. And it touch down at about 204 knots. After the orbiter's landing rollout is complete, there will then be the usual safety inspections, the so-called slip checks to look for any toxic propellants, which may have leaked or be venting. And the astronauts will configure switches in the cockpit for post-landing activities and participate with the KSC ground operations team to safe the vehicle. When the vehicle is deemed safe, all of the potential hazards and determination is made that there are no toxic gases around the orbiter. The purge and coolant umbilical access vehicle will move into position at the rear of the orbiter. Here we see the shuttle training aircraft with Kent Rominger, accompanied by Barbara Morgan, making approaches to the runway, making a final uh, assessment as to the landing conditions and the I, runway I of choice. Good job, thanks. After the purge and cooling system connections, the crew transport vehicle will be moved into position adjacent to the orbiter access hatch on Columbia's point port side, and there will be a cursory inspection of the thermal protection system tiles, the wheels, and the other landing gear systems. About 45 minutes after landing, work will also begin to remove the orbiter's external tank separation camera. Right, 
A physician will board Columbia shortly after the landing convoy arrives at Columbia's position on the runway. They will conduct a brief preliminary examination of the astronauts before the crew leaves the orbiter, and then the astronauts can make preparations to disembark and enter the crew transport vehicle for further medical evaluations. Because there are several medical test objectives for the crew this time, it will be longer than usual before the astronauts leave the shuttle landing facility runway. Four of the astronauts must remain reclined until this medical data can be collected while they are in the crew transport vehicle and through their return to the medical facilities at the astronaut quarters, which is located in the operations and checkout building about five miles south of the shuttle landing facility. So we expect to see only Commander Rick Husband, Pilot Willie McCool, and Flight Engineer Dr. Kalpana Tavla leave the crew transport vehicle and do the traditional walk around of the space shuttle orbiter. Because of the numerous life sciences experiments and test samples that must be removed from Columbia and the space hab while it's still on the runway, the start of the operation to tow Columbia to its hangar will not begin until very late this afternoon. Once back at the astronaut quarters, all of the crew will undergo thorough physical examinations, then have lunch and see their immediate family members, and they currently plan to go home to Houston on Sunday. Columbia's next mission is STS-118 in mid-November, plan to deliver the S-5 truss segment to the International Space Station, and the six-member crew will include NASA educator astronaut Barbara Morgan. Visibility and continuing to improve as we move toward our projected 9.16 a.m. landing time. And all convoy vehicles are in position ready to support the touchdown and rollout. Well, From the shuttle landing facility, this is the Kennedy Space Center Ground Operations okay. Control Center. Okay. After you get yours, then I'll get mine. Can I give this to you? I'm, I already, I don't have that bag anymore. Okay, then don't worry. Yeah. I can, uh, I can gray tape it up here if you want. That's a good idea. Are you ready for the camera, Laura? You said. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, no rush. We've got plenty of time. This is Mission Control, Houston, yeah, Columbia. Another thing to populate your Altitude is now 90 miles above the Pacific Ocean to the north of the Hawaiian Islands. About uh, two minutes away from entering Earth's atmosphere. All activities continue to go smoothly en route toward a touchdown at Kennedy Space Center at 8.16 a.m. Central Time. is currently targeted for the runway 33 at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, the runway selection continues to be discussed here in Michigan Control, however, but uh, for its approach to runway 33, Columbia would perform a right overhead turn to align with the runway of about 214 degrees around the heading alignment cylinder, an imaginary cylinder created by the microwave landing system for the shuttle that uh, assists in guiding it to for its final approach.
Columbia with wings level and nose angled up about 40 degrees to control heating as it descends into the atmosphere. It's altitude now 68 miles. As the Columbia descends into the atmosphere and approaches the continent of the United States, it'll perform the first in a series of four banks. It performs as it approaches the Kennedy Space Center. The first bank to the right, then back to the left, then back to the right, and then a final bank to the left as it approaches Kennedy and the shuttle landing facility runway. Those designed to dissipate speed for the shuttle as it descends into the atmosphere toward landing. Okay, fine, I'll go ahead. Um, this data set is a spliced Just data under 30 set. minutes to touchdown for Columbia now. I'm back on the 64 miles. Get us some data off of that first balloon that was broken. And it shows us 1,160 feet. Okay. Okay. And we're waiting for our re-release balloon, which was just released a few minutes ago. Okay. Now, you s we lost the balloon at 6,000 feet, and then we, did we get it back at some point? I was assuming it doesn't show up nearly as much as the back. Or when you say it's spliced it together, I, mean, I, don't wanna, I don't know whether I should. We did not, we did not get any data uh, from each really neat, it's I mean, a bike or a piece of And we spliced nose, basically the previous data set. I got you. On top of this one, okay. we'll just give us a the swirl pattern. Pattern. Now let's see, when, from where we're releasing the balloons to them, which way are they going out uh, over the water? Which way? Wind direction um, from the surface on up to about 10,000 feet. The direction is roughly out of the west, isn't it? Yes, like here, they are going out the water. Out of the water, I can cover that. We are. We start out with them far enough away from where our heck really is. And then they're going the wrong uh, way. I, got a bit I would compare. We are now. seeing. We're yeah. definitely seeing some spatial differences uh, with, uh, in the STA in this block. I would say. Okay. Well, the, yeah. In the STA, the last time here, we're not going to have We'll take it uh, across the continental United States, to crossing the California coast above yeah. the San Francisco um, Bay Area, and continuing yeah, across Sacramento, California. Providing a yeah, uh, spectacular right view for persons in that area of Columbia's descent through the atmosphere. That. Observation of the shuttle would begin about 5.51 a.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, and continue for about four minutes till 5.55 a.m. Pacific Time as the shuttle at an elevation of about 78 degrees. It will be visible as well through much of the United States Southwest, above uh, southern Nevada and uh, northern Arizona and uh, central New Mexico as it continues its descent through the atmosphere, uh, trailing our plasma trail uh, left as it heats the atmosphere around it uh, during its descent. Columbia's altitude now 54 miles as it continues to descend into the atmosphere. Wings level, nose angled up 40 degrees to control heating. Columbia's traveling about 17,000 miles per hour.
COG and it. Copy. Columbia's altitude. Right on right. 48 statute miles as it begins the first in a series of four banks to dissipate speed as it uh, descends into the atmosphere. Banking to the right now, a steep bank of 60 degrees and approaching uh, the west coast of the United States. I got it. Columbia speed 16,620 miles per hour. Range to touchdown at the Kennedy Space Center runway, 3,450 statute miles. Columbia in almost an 80 degree bank to the right uh, to dissipate speed. The first of four banks it performs as it uh, approaches Florida to slow down as it descends. Altitude now 47 miles or about 248,000 feet. The shuttle speed is 16,400 miles per hour. Aboard the shuttle on the flight deck are Commander Rick Husband and Pilot Willie McCool, Flight Engineer Kapana Chavla, and uh, Mission Specialist Laurel Clark. On the lower deck of the shuttle for entry are Payload Commander Mike Anderson, Mission Specialist David Brown, and Payload Specialist from the Israel Space Agency, Alon Ramon. Columbia approaching uh, the coast of California now. It'll, it's predicted to cross the coast and be visible in the San Francisco area about 5.51 a.m. Central Time, or Pacific Standard Time, rather. And uh, almost uh, directly over, pass almost directly overhead of Sacramento, California. It actually crosses the California coast uh, just to the north of the San Francisco area. Columbia is on target for runway 33 at the Kennedy Space Center Shuttle Landing Facility runway. Uh, subject of runway selection has been discussed in Mission Control, continues to be discussed some, but uh, in the meanwhile at present, uh, the original targeting for Columbia is toward runway 33. And as it approaches runway 33, it would perform a right overhead 212 degree turn to align with that runway around the heading alignment cylinder. An imaginary cylinder created by the microwave scan beam landing system at the shuttle runway that assists in the shuttle's guidance toward its final approach to the runway. Shuttle's altitude now 45 miles, speed 15,800 miles per hour, continuing in a right bank with wings angled 70 degrees, the first of four banks it performs to dissipate speed as it approaches landing. Columbia crossing uh, the California coast, again, uh, just to the north of the San Francisco area. Its course will take it across uh, Sacramento, California. on the left side of the vehicle, the hydraulic return temperatures. 
two of them on system one and one in the, each of systems two and three. Four high return temps? To the left outboard and left inboard elevon. Okay, is there anything common to them, DSC or MDM or anything? I mean, you're telling me you lost them all at exactly the same time. No, right? not exactly. They were within probably four or five seconds of each other. Okay. Where are those? Where is that instrumentation located? They're, all four of them are located in the uh, aft part of the left wing, right in front of the elevons, elevon actuators. And there okay. is no commonality. No commonality. Columbia continuing in a right bank, a wings angled 43 degrees. Speed 15,000 miles per hour, altitude 43 miles, 2,090 miles to touchdown at the Kennedy Space Center, targeted for runway 33 at Kennedy at present. Crossing uh, the continental United States, uh, now uh, crossing Back above again, which southern are Nevada to the north of Las Vegas. It's all three hydraulic systems. It's Two of them are to the left outboard elevon, and two of them to the left inboard. Okay, I got you. My guidance for processing drag with good residual. Copy. Thank you. Slide you see. Go. Area grounds are enabled for the landing count. Thank you. Columbia's course continuing across Arizona and at uh, the Arizona New Mexico border near the four corners area of the United States. This course will take it almost directly above Albuquerque, New Mexico. Its altitude now two hundred and twenty five thousand feet or forty two miles. Speed fourteen thousand three hundred miles per hour. 1,785 miles to touchdown at the Kennedy Space Center. It's banking now back to the left, the second in a series of four banks that dissipate speed of the spacecraft as it uh, becomes an aircraft and descends into the atmosphere toward Florida. Wings angled about uh, 75 degrees to the left. GNC flight. Flight GNC. Everything look good to you. Control and rates and everything is nominal, right? Control has been stable through the uh, rolls that we've uh, done so far fly. We have good trims. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Okay. To max flight? Flight max. All other indications for your hydraulic system indications are good? They're all good. We've had good quantities all the way across. And the other temps are normal? The other temps are normal, yes, sir. And when you say you lost these, are you saying that they went All four of them were off-scale low. Or off-scale low. And they were all staggered. They were, like I said, within several seconds of each other. Okay. Columbia continuing uh, toward Florida, now approaching the uh, New Mexico-Texas border. Altitude 40 miles. Speed 13,200 miles per hour. Range to touchdown 1,400 miles. The shuttle in the left flight. bank with wings angled so about to 57 degrees to horizontal. Being run through DDS right now. Flight max. Go. We just lost uh, tire pressure on left outboard and left inboard both tires. And Columbia Houston, we see your tire pressure copy. messages and we did not copy Is it your last. Max? Uh, flight max. Flight max are also off. Roger, off the
fighting tough. Go. Yeah, we're just taking a few hits here. We're right up on top of the tail. Not too bad. Max flight. Flight Max. And there's no commonality between all these tire pressure instrumentations and the hydraulic return instrumentations. Uh, no, sir, there's not. We've also lost the uh, nose gear down talk back and the right main gear down talk back. Nose gear and right main gear down talk backs? Yes, sir. And flight ECOM? ECOM. I've got four temperature sensors on the bottom line data that are off scale low. Columbia out of communications at present uh, with Mission Control as it continues its uh, course toward Florida. I didn't, I didn't expect uh, this bad of a hit on comm. GC, how far are we from UHF? Is that two minute clock good? Hey, affirmative flight. GNC. Go. If uh, we have any reason to uh, suspect any sort of uh, controllability issue, I would keep the uh, control cards handy on page 4 13. Copy. Fourteen minutes to touchdown for Columbia at the Kennedy Space Center. Flight controllers are continuing to stand by to regain communications with the spacecraft. Inco, we were uh, rolled left last data we had, and you weren't expecting uh, a little bit of radicom, but not this long? That's correct, Flight. I expect it to be a little bit intermittent, and this is pretty solid right here. No onboard system config changes right before we lost data? That's correct, Flight. All look good. Still all on string two, and everything looked good. String two, looking good. Two minutes for Milo. Columbia Houston, com check. My fight Go. Close in aim point with the uh, one hour balloon shows is touching down at uh, 1496, 1500 feet down the runway. Our crosswind right now is on the left, from the left, on the 3-3 end. Columbia Houston, UHF comm check. Capcom, uh, Charlie Hobaugh calling uh, Columbia on UHF like frequency as it approaches uh, the Merritt Island tracking station range in Florida. Flight. I copy. Flight back. Twelve and a half well, minutes to touch down according to uh, clocks and mission control. Away, so I, I do believe it's instrumentation. Okay. Houston, UHF comm check. Go. I know this date is a little late. Uh, the one-hour balloon uh, protects us for wind Columbia persistence. Houston, UHF comm check. I think we're in a smaller wind persistence case than that. In other words, uh, 
we shouldn't expect as a big of a change. Uh, I'm comfortable with 1,500 feet down the runway. Flight controllers are standing by for Columbia to move within communications range Flight of the Merritt Island tracking Marla's station not in Florida. Any RAF at this time. To regain to communications uh, with Columbia. Okay. Final one, you expecting tracking? One minute ago, flight. Also, a uh, flight controller standing by for tracking data of Columbia that also received through the Merritt Island Columbia tracking Houston, station. UHF com check. Ten and a half minutes to anticipated touchdown for Columbia. Why'd you see no C band yet? Copy. Flight controllers are still standing by for C-band tracking data from the Merritt Island Tracking Station of Columbia and uh, UHF Communications. Columbia, Houston, UHF comm check. Flight in, go. Go. I could swap strings in the blind. Okay. Command is over. Good work, Flight. Eight minutes uh, on the touchdown clock for Columbia. Flight controllers continuing to stand by to regain communications with the spacecraft. Flight Inco commanded string one in the blind. Inco. I commanded string one in the blind flight. Copy. Flight controller is standing by uh, for communications through the Merritt Island tracking station, a ground tracking site in Florida. Flight GC. Go. Milo's taking one of their antennas off into a search mode. Copy. Final flight. Go ahead, flight. Did we get, have we gotten any tracking data? We got a blip of tracking data. It was a bad data point flight. Uh, we do not believe that uh, was the orbiter. We're in a 
search pattern with our C-bands at this time. We do not have any valid data at this time. Okay. Any other trackers that we can go to? Let me start talking flight, my navigator. This is Mission Control Houston. Flight controllers are continuing to seek tracking data of Columbia. Touchdown clocks uh, count down to six minutes to touchdown for the anticipated shutdown touchdown of Columbia at the, the Kennedy Space Center runway. Tracking data is being sought through the Merritt Island tracking station located uh, near the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Communications uh, with Columbia were lost at about 8 a.m. Central Time, about the 10, 10 minutes ago. This is Mission Control Houston. Flight controllers are continuing to stand by for communications from Columbia. The last communications with the spacecraft occurred about 8 a.m. Central Time as it uh, was above Central Texas, currently uh, seeking communications or tracking data from the spacecraft through C-band radar and ground tracking GC sites flight. located at the Merritt Island tracking GC station flight. in Florida. Why do you say lock the doors? Copy. Do you have any tracking? No, sir. Flight MOD on the flight loop. Go. So, my C bands uh, have not required anything. We are only uh, acquiring false locks at this time. I copy, Fido. This is Mission Control Houston. Flight controllers continue to seek tracking okay, or communications the with the Columbia to, uh, through the Merritt Island tracking station. Plan procedure. FCOH checklist. Page Last communication with Columbia was at 8 a.m. Central Time, approximately above Texas, as it approached the Kennedy Space Center uh, for its landing. 
Flock Director Leroy Kane is now instructing controllers to uh, get out their contingency procedures and uh, begin to follow those. Fight or flight. Go ahead. Do you have any information or reports from Space Command? The flight and next officer reports uh, no tracking data from the C-band radar at the Merritt Island Tracking Station has been reported of uh, any objects. And all flight controllers on page nine of the FCOH procedure, you need to make sure you step through the actions required in step 20. That's for your workstation logs, display printouts. There's a whole list of data collection items that we need to make sure we log through. This is Mission Control Houston. Flight Director Leroy Kane is instructing uh, controllers to follow contingency procedures. The last communications with the Shuttle Columbia during its descent from orbit were at about 8 a.m. Central Time as it uh, was descending through the atmosphere. And GC flight? Flight, GC. Flight, flight. We need to take the equivalent at an altitude command of about 207,000 feet. Yes, sir. Copy. We don't have en route the to the Kennedy BFC Space Center, Florida, we and a touchdown a that uh, was capability that we need to do. anticipated we'll to occur done. about two and a half minutes ago. Flight controllers received uh, no further communications with the spacecraft after about 8 a.m. Central Time. And uh, no further GC tracking flight. data from the spacecraft that uh, was gained uh, from C-band tracking radar at the Merritt Island the tracking station in Florida. That we need in the yes, sir. checklist. Okay. Contingency procedures in effect in uh, mission control require all operators to uh, conserve all their data and uh, log books and notes that have been taken that uh, being instructed by Flight Director Leroy Kane for controllers to begin uh, following those steps and secure all information. And folks, uh, listen up again on the flight loop. No, no phone calls off-site, outside of this room. Our discussions are on these loops, on the recorded Devis loops only. 
No data, no phone calls, no transmissions anywhere into or out. Apply GC. GC. Yeah, we have no way of disabling the black phones. I understand. Again, uh, Flight Director Leroy Kane has declared a contingency. Flight controllers here in Mission Control are securing all their information, notes, and data gathered from the spacecraft. The last communications with GC Columbia flight. at 8 a.m. Central Time as it was descending flight toward GC. Florida for its landing. Bill, have you at that time uh, about 207,000 feet above Central Texas, traveling approximately 12,500 miles per hour, 1,192 miles on. from its. Okay. Touchdown at Kennedy that Space one I'd Center. Like to do as soon as we can, Bill. Copy. Since 8 a.m., uh, no communications were received with Columbia, uh, and no tracking data received uh, through the Merritt Island Tracking Station. Uh, those uh, efforts made. The flight dynamics officer reports uh, no objects tracked through that uh, tracking data.